Hi, this video focuses on um, the role of SGX, which is Topic Objective 2.3. Uh, Singapore Exchange is actually licensed by MAS to run as a securities exchange. Okay, right now, there's only one exchange in Singapore, which is SGX. Uh, before 1999, when SGX was formed, there were actually two exchanges. Okay? They call themselves Singapore Stock Exchange, which is in short SES, and Singapore International Monetary Exchange. In short, we call them CIMEX. All right? So after they merge. Um, SES, Singapore Stock Exchange, was renamed into Singapore Exchange Securities Trading Limited. In short, we call them SGXST. CIMEX was then re, uh, renamed into Singapore Exchange Derivatives Trading Limited. In short, we call them SGXDT. The difference between these two exchanges that was merged is SGXST is a marketplace for stocks and shares, right? Securities. SGXDT is a marketplace for derivatives, all right? Derivatives such as futures, all right? Um, options, okay? Those are traded in SGXDT, okay? And the members of these of SGX are securities and stockbroking companies, right? To make this uh, much clearer, people like you and me who are investors will have to trade through a stockbroking company. We can't go to SGX knock on the door and say, I want to trade on a certain share. You have to go through the members who have the, the, the license and who has um, who is cleared right, to use the facilities in SGX in order to do the, all the trading. Right? So therefore, uh, if you want to invest, you have to go through a stockbroking companies who are members of SGX. Okay? The functions of SGX uh, first is really to formulate their management policies of SGX, right? The day-to-day -day running of SGX itself. They also regulate their member companies, okay, according to certain rules, right? They call it the SGX rulebook. Um, and then they also provide integrated clearing and settlement and depository uh, facilities, which I will explain a little bit later because uh, this, this function is undertaken by one of the subsidiary, which is called CDP, Central Depository. All right, um, I have both the uh, the second point, which is regulate uh, member companies according to SGX rules, because this is what we are focusing on the rules, all right? That um, in the securities market, uh, SGX has the following important um, subsidiaries. Uh, just now I mentioned Central Depository. Uh, in short, we call them CDP. All right, uh, we also have SGXST, which is uh, converted from SES uh, in the previous slide. And then we have SGXDT, which is actually the subsidiary that is handling the, uh, the, uh, the derivatives trading. All right? And then we have a subsidiary which is called Singapore Exchange Regulation, SGX Recco in short. Later, I'll explain a little bit more on what this uh, subsidiary actually do. Okay, we were talking about central deposits just now. Uh, this subsidiary under SGX was established in 1987. All right? This is the subsidiary that helps to provide integrated clearing and settlement facilities. What is clearing and what is settlement? Basically, clearing and settlement is um, the, the operations behind the actual um, transfer of stocks and shares and the money uh, during this trading mechanism, uh, the mechanics. All right? Um, it also it is also a central counterparty and nominee, right? They hold securities on behalf of its depositors. What does this mean? It means that right now, if you go to a brokerage firm, you want to start um, uh, investing in some shares, you have to open an account with the uh, stockbroking company, right? Because just now I did mention they are the member of SGX and they, uh, only they have the access to the securities market. So you have to open an account with them and trade through them. Other than this trading account that you open with the uh, stockbroking company, you also have to open a CDP account. This CDP account will help you to hold your securities once you uh, 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 buy them okay, over at, uh, the market through the stockbroking um, company in SGX itself. So, so you don't really get the physical you know, shares that you bring back home after you buy the shares. Right. It's all digital, so whenever you buy a share, these, uh, these, these holdings right, uh, is being held uh, on behalf of you uh, by CDP. Okay? And because of what, uh, because they are the central 
uh, nominee and the central counterparty, um, they distribute entitlement to the shareholders. Meaning, if you hold shares and they help you uh, hold it, all right, and uh, when you are entitled any dividends that's related to your share, uh, they are also responsible to distribute those entitlement to you. Okay. Uh, next up is SJST. This is pretty straightforward because this is the subsidiary that deals with uh, securities trading. Basically, this is where uh, stock and shares are being traded. Right? So, SJST provides and maintains facilities to conduct a business of a stock exchange. Okay. Other than doing this, um, the next three bullet points says that it sets rules. Right? It's very important because they set rules to make sure they are orderly trading and settlement of securities. Okay? There's fairness in the trading. All right? Uh, secondly, it also sets rules to regulate these stockbroking member companies. Okay, they make sure you know they have integrity. Yeah, you know, they are qualified uh, in order to trade in the market. Uh, thirdly, it sets up listing requirements. What this really means is for any company who wants to get listed into SGX, it must uh, fulfill certain criteria that SGST has set for them before they are able to be listed um, on the stock exchange for people to trade. Okay, so the next thing is SGXDT. All right, SGXDT, uh, just now I've also mentioned a little bit on that, is that allow tradings of derivatives, okay? Derivatives such as futures and options. These futures and options uh, have an underlying. The underlying could be interest rates, equities, which is stocks and shares, uh, indexes, and uh, energy uh, indexes, all right? And the fourth uh, subsidiary uh, under SGX, which is the most important subsidiary uh, in our view, uh, in this module, is the SGX Red Coal, right? Uh, it is actually just established recently, okay? Um, back in 2017, all right? Um, this is the subsidiary that undertakes all the regulatory functions of SGX. So you'll be surprised, hey, how come SGX also uh, perform regulatory functions? Uh, it is important for them, uh, for SGX uh, to perform these regulatory functions because uh, they run, you know, the securities uh, trading business. So they have to be responsible to make sure that the market is being played fairly, right? And the conduct of the business is, uh, is fair, is with integrity, okay? And in order to do that, all right, in order to have this subsidiary that undertakes all these regulatory functions, they must have an independent and uh, separate board of directors from SGX, okay, meaning it has to be separate. This will make sure that there's no conflict of interest, okay. Imagine you have a uh, uh, same board of directors in SGX as well as this red code, then um, it, it sounds like I'm regulating myself, isn't it? So it has to be independent, all right. And red code's board members has to be approved by MAS. MAS have, have a say, right, to make sure that uh, the regulatory uh, functions that is being performed by SGX uh, is again without conflict of interest. The next thing I would like to uh, mention is that uh, SGX has two arms, all right? Uh, this will make a little bit more sense uh, from the previous slide uh, because SGX is actually a profit-taking organization, right? It has a commercial arm, right? It has to maximize shareholder returns. It basically uh, it is a business, right? But uh, on the other hand, uh, it has to run a not-for-profit self-regulatory arm, right? Of course, just now I did mention, that is to maintain a fair and orderly market. And this part is already undertaken by SGX Redco, that subsidiaries under SGX, okay? So because of these two conflicting uh, role, right? One is to maximize your shareholder returns, and then the other one is to regulate, right? When you regulate something, uh, it actually is, is really not good for business, right? Because when you regulate means you are trying to make sure that uh, you, you are be careful with your business. And when you say that you are, be care you, you are being careful with your business, um, it sort of impedes the, uh, the business that you are, you are bringing in. So these two roles are usually in conflict. And because SGX have these two arms, uh, we call it SRO conflict, self-regulatory organization, right? So, so there is this potential conflict. That's why it's very um, sensitive. So that's why uh, on the previous slide, we mentioned that SGX Redco has to have an independent 
uh, board of directors on their own. Okay, different from the SGX side, which is profit taking. Okay, so uh, just a note from self-regulatory uh, organization. In a lot of other countries, if you look at this slide, um, New York, for example, the exchange and the regulators are different, right? Um, Securities and Exchange Commission, they are the one who uh, sets up the rules for securities trading in New York. And New York, uh, NYSE is the exchange that is uh, conducting the, the securities trading business. Okay, in London, you have the London Stock Exchange. Uh, the one that's regulating over the securities uh, exchange is the FCA or FSA, okay? In, in Shanghai, in China, you have a Shanghai Stock Exchange and these are regulated by uh, CSRC. And then in Hong Kong as well, you have the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. Uh, they also have a similar Securities and Futures Commission. Uh, these two roles are separate in these countries. But in Singapore, we have SGX playing both roles together. So that's what is very important to understand the SRO conflict. Because they are the same entity, therefore there, there can arise um, potential conflict of interest. Alright, so that's what SRO conflict means. Okay, next up. Um, so, for SGX, right, actually, if we really think about it, uh, regulation, again, is very key. Alright, it's very important to ensure that the listed company in the exchange um, are adhering to the rules set in place, right? Um, if they were to get listed in SGX, they have to be considered as healthy companies. They cannot be a shady company, right? So the process of being listed in SGX is actually not easy, right? They because there's a lot of rules and a lot of criteria to 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 fulfill before they are able to be listed on SGX, okay? And of course, the regulation is also important to make sure that retail investors themselves who are investing in these stocks and shares uh, that's available in SGX uh, have accurate and timely information, okay? So that they can make decisions for themselves or for their company, all right? So these are, um, in a nutshell, these are the SGX Redco regulatory activities. This is extracted from SGX annual report itself. Um, these are the guidelines, right? Uh, operating a fair, orderly and transparent market, right? Admitting high quality issuers and market intermediaries. This means that uh, the members that's coming into SGX must be high quality, must be highly qualified. Uh, admitting issuers who are the, the listed companies must also of high standards, all right? Um, so SGX record also need to make sure that uh, the facilities that is done uh, across the uh, securities trading must be safe and must be efficient. All right. And uh, the lastly, um, support supporting the continuous development of SGX markets and clearinghouse. So because things keep changing, so the regulations arm of SGX needs to always be on a supporting role rather than you know uh, being someone who. Uh, of being a department who always try to make things difficult for the business to run through. Okay, they need to work hand in hand, right? Uh, just now I did mention SGX is a dual role regulator, so they have potential SRO conflicts. Um, but uh, with this guideline, with these activities, they are supposed to support each other. All right. So um, next up is really to understand MES and SGX uh, regulatory relationship because. We know that MAS is the main regulator in Singapore with regards to the financial service. Um, SGX, now that we know that it also has a regulating, a regulatory arm, right, that's trying to regulate their member companies, uh, also uh, sets rules, right, for securities uh, trading to, to happen, right? So, so under SFA, okay, SFA is a Securities Futures Act, right? Uh, MAS will issue directives to SGX to ensure fair and orderly securities and futures market, right, and and proper management of the risk that uh, SGX is is uh, taking. So so in this kind of relationship, MAS has the authority, okay, to put things right. If in the case of SRO conflict, there's a conflict of interest, MAS has the authority to step in, right. Um, how do their relationship um comes down to it basically MAS has oversight over SGX uh, exercise of its regulatory responsibility. 
So while SGX is exercising uh, their their regulatory uh, 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 function, uh, MAS actually is overseeing. All right, and as long as you know uh, it is according uh, it is by by the law, MAS will be the one who will be enforcing. All right. So later on, we will also uh, be be looking at the sources of regulations. All right where we talk about uh, what kind of regulatory uh, 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 instruments have legal or non-legal effect. So as long as it um, have legal effect, it is a legislation, MAS is the one to administer. All right. um, SGX uh, has a direct and frontline regulatory responsibility in the futures, uh, in the securities and futures market over the traders in the exchange. So you can see that MAS is still the big brother of, of regulations. SGX has a very focused regulatory responsibility towards their, uh, their companies that are listed in SGX as well as the members right, in SGX who are the one trading within the exchange. So in SGX itself, it also has a disciplinary committee that you know, has powers right, uh, to enforce right, those rules that they have. Right, then they impose on the members of the SGX as well as the listed company. Okay, in this disciplinary uh, committee, uh, it's comprised of people and persons appointed by the Red Co. in consultation with MAS. Again, MAS had to step in and say, okay, these are the people who can sit in the disciplinary committee and be fair. All right. So again, uh, to prevent conflict of interest, there should be no director or officer or any employee of SGX ST right to be appointed inside this disciplinary committee okay so what powers do they have okay this disciplinary committee disciplinary uh, actually a disciplinary committee has the power to reprimand to fine to suspend and expel any member company all right that fails to comply with their rules Okay, so so uh, what is reprimand? Basically, uh, they can really pull this member company out, uh, uh, depending on the severity of the breach. All right, uh, they can reprimand. Uh, you might say, hey, oh, it's just a reprimand, right? I mean, what 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 uh, what damage can it do to to that member company? But when we reprimand um, member companies, right? Really, um, it is a reputation issue. Okay, when when SGX reprimand some member company, it's usually um, posted in the public, all right. So in a way, we are telling everyone that this member company is breaching certain rules, and it it is not good for the reputation of the member company. So, uh, there is a a sort of a damage to the to the name of the member company, all right. And of course, uh, they are able to find, um, depending on the severity of the breaches of their rules. They can suspend the member company from participating in the exchange. And the worst case, they are able to expel the member company okay, from the exchange itself. So they can never come back and trade inside Singapore Exchange. Right? This is the, uh, uh, the order of the severity of um, the punishment that SGX can, can, can give. Right, to, to member companies who fail to comply with their rules. Okay, for SGX, since we have a disciplinary committee, somehow uh, there also has an uh, appeals committee. All right? So first up, what uh, comprises these people who are in this committee? Again, just like the disciplinary committee, um, these people have to be appointed by SGX Red Co Board and approved by MAS also. Right, um, if you know you are charged by the disciplinary committee for breaching a certain rule, okay, and if you want to make an appeal, okay, you can make it only within fourteen days of the notice of charge, okay, from the date of the notice of charge that's given to you, alright, and after you go to the appeals committee, right, and if the committee uh, decision is out. It is then final and binding. You can no longer make a second appeal. All right. Okay. So at this point, um, I would like you to take out your palette again. Right. Uh, go to the palette uh, uh, board, and 
just give a response, right, to why do you think we should have an appeals committee? What is the purpose of an appeals committee? What do you think? Maybe you want to pause the video right now and then after that, uh, do your response. Okay? So, next video, we will look at the different other regulatory bodies or, or organization uh, there is a bit, uh, there is uh, in the market other than MAS or an SGX. Okay?